Hey guys, it's Makeshift, and today I'm going to show you how to make braids out of Minky, like on this plushie here. So he has a couple braids on the side of his head, and it's actually wrapped pieces of Minky all together. The little band on the end, and they look nice and interesting because they do have a, a 3D aspect to them. They're pretty simple to make, so let's go through the process. At a bare minimum, you need three tubes of minky sewn together to twist into a braid. You do actually want to go ahead and sew these strips of fabric together with right sides together like this to where you have just a single tube of minky. You can either have it be uh, two cuts of minky sewn together or you can have one cut of minky folded together and then sewn along an edge and then you would flip this tube right side out and then you need three of them to twist together into a braid. You don't want to just cut out pieces of minky for a couple of reasons. One, you would have no backing to it so you would just have the, the plain backside of minky so when you twist it together you would see the backside of minky. Uh, if you're thinking, well I could just kind of glue or attach the, the two sides somehow, you're still going to have a raw edge on both sides of the tube that would show up in the braid, which wouldn't look good. So these tubes can be kind of annoying because they're very small and especially for a plush, it's probably going to be pretty small and turning them right side out can be a pain, uh, but there are a few tools you can use to turn these right side out which I'll cover when I go ahead and, and sew this together for you guys. To determine how big your braid should be, you can measure this against the plush you're making itself if you're gonna hand sew on the braids after you're finished. Or if you just have your pattern, you can measure it up against the, the pattern itself. Uh, but just with some simple measuring, you can determine how wide you want your braid to be and then to determine how wide your individual tubes of fabric need to be, I would say to cut that about in half. So the width of your braid that you want, if it's one inch, you would want your individual tubes to be about a half an inch wide, even though you're gonna have three of them since you're twisting it together to where you can really only see two of them at a time, you would want to just divide your desired width in half. So if you want to just do the three single tubes twisted together, uh, you need to keep in mind how it's going to attach to your plush and if it's going to look good or not. The other issue would be how it ends because if you think about having three tubes of fabric together, no matter how you twist them, you're just gonna have three little strands of minky down at the bottom which doesn't look very good and it doesn't look very hair-like. Rather than just have the three simple tubes, I did a bit more patterning to make it look a bit nicer. The first thing I did was pattern the top of the piece to look like how I want it to attach to my plush. So on my plush, the braid is going to hang from the front of his ear. So I've patterned this little area right here where the braid starts to form and it's just going to rest in front of his ear like that. So if you're forming a, a ponytail braid or, or something like that, uh, just think about how you want this top area to be. And then you can have your three strands of fabric coming down from that. So on my pattern itself, it is three tubes of minky just side by side like this. So you can just cut one single long rectangle and then divide it into three even strands up to a certain point and then you're going to have your attachment. For me it was just this simple shape uh, somewhat of a rectangle but with this angled edge up here to where it would rest against the ear and then I have some space for that attachment area and then my tubes start from there. So this piece does not have any seam allowance on it, which is unusual for my patterns, but this is going to be very tight to sew because you just want to sew on either side of these lines. So when I went ahead and traced it onto my minky, 
I laid it down and then traced just the seam line itself leaving extra fabric along it because uh, this is going to be very tight to get in here. So this sewing is a bit complicated because while these edges on the side might not be difficult to sew, having these three tubes of fabric very close to each other, you need to precisely sew on either side of these lines, but also have enough room to come up here and cut in with your scissors because you need to actually separate them into tubes. So your end product is going to come out like this, where you have the three tubes attached to your point up here, just dangling down at the bottom. Uh, you're gonna have some raw edges because you need to be able to turn these right side out and it helps if you have the, the bottoms open. Um, but we're going to add a little attachment point at the bottom to clean up how this looks anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together so you guys can see what it looks like before I flip it right side out. So it can be hard to see because it's so small, but you can kind of see here how I've just sewn right along the edges of my traced line. I've tried to get as close as possible to the line, but at the same time I need to leave enough room to be able to get in there with my scissors and cut inside of the two stitches to actually form a tube. So I did that with this side here. You can see that I cut as close as possible to the stitches without actually cutting them. If you got too close, you can just try again, rip out your stitches. If you accidentally cut into your stitches while cutting out the tube, you can just kind of sew over that edge and try to fix it. You also want to trim your seams along the edges because you don't want to have any extra fabric because this is pretty small detailed work. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this other side now. And then very carefully slice along the inside. And this is where it helps to sew beside the line that you trace because then you can just cut along the line that you traced without worrying about cutting any stitches. And then you just want to get right up to where your stitch ends. Okay. Now we have three separate tubes. And I need to trim off the extra fabric, the edge here. And now we can flip this right side out. So if you were just making three tubes of fabric not attached to anything, there's a couple different tools that I know of that you can use. One is, are these little sticks here. Uh, they have a little notch in the middle of them to where you insert the top of it into your tube and then you kind of grab it with this notch and then pull down over the tube all the way until the top starts sticking out of it and then you have your tube flipped out but since this is all attached together that method's not going to work for us. There's also these quick turn uh, tools. I haven't used them but apparently they have good reviews uh, so you can just look for different tools to flip out little tubes. I use uh, this stick all the time to flip things out because you'll end up having to do this kind of often in plush making. But since our piece is a little different and it's attached at the top, we gotta be a little creative with how we're gonna flip this right side out. My favorite tool for that is a pair of forceps, which you can just get on Amazon or something like that. Um, forceps lock, so you pull them apart and you can see where they 
lock here and then you just push them together and so that'll help uh, grip things when you stick the forceps in so just take the forceps and stick them into one of the tubes and then open them up and grab one of the sides making sure that the back side isn't grabbed lock them together and then start pulling And then you release it and so then you gotten a little bit out um, so then I just insert it again into that end and do the same process where I grab one side lock and then pull out Then at some point you can just stick them in and push out the, the bottom of that. If you don't have any of these tools, you could just try to do it by hand. Um, the smaller your tube is, the harder it's going to be. But I've used a pin in the past and tried to do a similar method to where I reach in and grab the fabric with a pin and try to pull it out that way, but it's a lot more difficult to do it like that. All right, so now we've got all our tubes flipped right side out. And you can check to make sure that none of your seams popped since you were getting really close with the scissors there and they all look good. So now you can braid this together. I'm just going to be doing a traditional braid where you just cross over the ends and alternate between making them the, the middle strand. Uh, so you just start with the right one and cross it over the top to make it the, the middle. And then you take the left one and cross that over the top to make that the middle. And then you keep doing that. So you just keep going back and forth between making your right and your left strand the middle and going all the way down and the tighter you do it the less defined your braid will get uh, if you do it super tight you just won't really be able to see the individual strands anymore um, but if you like that look then that's totally your decision uh, but I do a, a looser braid just so you can see these individual strands a little bit more. So now you have these loose pieces of minky at the end so you can just take a pin and pin it together. But now you have this uh, end that has some loose strands of minky and it doesn't look good and uh, it's not realistic either because you wouldn't have just little strands of hair like tubes hanging down at the bottom but first you need to uh, secure this so I just do a top stitch all along the end of it making sure that I grab every strand so that it stays together. So after you top stitch the, the bottom strands together, then you need to figure out what you want the bottom to look like. So all I did was take my braid and lay it down onto a piece of paper and then draw out a shape how I want the braid to end. So this just little, so this little teardrop like shape here was how I decided I want the hair to look like at the bottom. And then once you draw out your shape to scale, you can go ahead and trace that onto Minky and cut it out, sew it together. And so here's my little piece like that. So now I can take this little piece here and just slip it onto the end of the braid and cover up the end of it since it doesn't look very good. So you want it to be large enough to be able to go over your braid, but you also want it to be tight enough to give the illusion of being held together 
uh, by some kind of band. So once you have that together, then you can just hand sew this bottom piece onto your braid and then it's all attached together. So now your braid looks a little bit better at the bottom than it did with just those three strands of fabric hanging down at the bottom. So to finish it off, you would want to make some kind of band to go over that transition to help hide the fact that it is two separate pieces. This is just a piece of suede lace that I use to put it right over that transition right there to hide hide it to make it look a, a little bit more realistic. And so you can use whatever you want. You can use a little piece of cotton or, or whatever material you want. You could use some minky as well. And so that's pretty much it. You can attach this braid in your desired method, whether you hand sew it on or if you go ahead and machine sew it onto your plush as well. If you're looking for ways to attach your braid to your plush, if you'd like to machine sew it on. I do have a video on attaching appendages with machine sewing, which you could use for this method, as well as my video on making ponytails covers it a bit as well. And so that's it. It's all done. It looks nice and, and neat, thanks to the addition on the bottom and the extra attachment at the top. So you can go ahead and attach this in your desired method, whether you're going to hand sew it on or machine sew it on, maybe in a, a seam, or you could attach it with my method of attaching appendages to a, a plushie, which I will link the video if you guys would like some help with that. So thanks for watching today and see you next time.